Morning's Wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, JCTickets.net, Geico Insurance, Dunaway Furniture, Ocean City Golf Club, RussellStreetReport.com, Comfort and Gold Coast, Holiday Inn Express, Biotoyota.com, your official site for Toyota deals, the original Green Turtle, hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. And welcome in. It is the original Green Turtles Ravens Rap Show right here on Comcast Beach TV. And now this season also on WMDT TV Channel 47, in which we're extremely happy to be a part of broadening our reach of the show on Delmarva. And we're back once again for our seventh year on Delmarva's Rock Radio and the strongest signal Ravens affiliate on Delmarva, the Rock Station 93.5 The Beach. Happy to be back with those folks again as well. We're coming to you from the Ravens Room at the Blue Ox Barn Grill, 127th Street and Coastal Highway in Ocean City with Ravens fans all across Delmarva, including Ravens News 44. Give yourselves a hand yeah. once again. Great job representing uh, us this evening. Well, welcome into week number four of the NFL uh, for your Baltimore Ravens, that is. We're going to recap the Ravens' 23-21 win over the Cleveland Browns. We'll talk news and notes, recap the AFC North, and preview the upcoming game this Sunday against the Carolina Panthers at M&T Bank Stadium kickoff at 1 o'clock. The Ravens Rap Show is brought to you by the original Green Turtle, the Blue Ox Bar and Grill, of which uh, we've got the beautiful Ravens room. Also, our friends at Bud Light, the comforting Gold Coast, our friends at Geico, RussellStreetReport.com, the official website of Ravens Rap. Also, Ocean City Golf Club, JCTickets.net, which are providing us ticket giveaways all year long. It behooves you to come on down to the show. We give you tickets, and five times this year, we're giving away tickets to Ravens games. In fact, we're doing so after tonight's show. So come on down to the show, and we'll hook you up. Hopefully, you'll be a winner with tickets this season. Also, if you want to see Orioles playoffs, uh, playoff games, that is, JCTickets.net has Oriole playoff tickets. Our friends at Holiday Inn Express at Northside at Ocean City also sponsoring the show. Donaway Furniture at buyatoyota.com. Don't forget, you can like us on Ravens Rap at uh, Ravens Rap at the Blue Ox, also RavensRap.com. I'm Mike Bradley from 1057 The Fan in Baltimore and locally in mornings. Mike and Jake in the morning on 92.7 WGND. To my left, former All Pro 14 year Baltimore Colts safety. Bruce Lair. Welcome back, Bruce. Good to be here, guys. Yeah. Yeah, man. Looking good as ever from the Fountain of Youth. I don't know how there this guy go. does it. There we go. <laughs> Just doing what we can do. To his left from Endless Golf, the Resort Golf Guide, and of course, back in the day, the Stallion Sports Show. Bobby Vermillion, welcome back, sir. Good to be back. Good to be back, Mike. With the Stallion, I remember that. He's in Florida. He's, taking, he's retired. <laughs> He's still calling them, though, isn't he? He calls them every now and then, yeah. for sure. Bingo, baby. There you go. There you All right. Go. Uh, some notes quickly before the game as the Ravens went into the game against the Cleveland Browns. Cornerback Lardarius Webb making his first uh, start of the season, in which we were happy to have him back. Running back Bernard Pierce and linebacker Arthur Brown of note were inactive for this game. So running back Lorenzo Taliaferro, the rookie, got his first start. And, Bruce, I'll start with you. I had three keys to this game going in to win get off to a fast start, stop Cleveland's run game, and establish the run, and I thought we did all three. You're absolutely right, and that's exactly what Dean Pease was talking about defensively, and of course, uh, John Harbaugh and, and Gary Kubiak. The thing is, when you're on the road, you want the crowd out of it. You want to start fast, and in order to do that, they had to move the football both through the air and through the ground, and they were able to do that successfully. Eight or nine plays, 60 yards, they didn't get in the end zone, but they got the three points. And then really after that, it was only a few three and outs from both sides on this football game. And then it was a heavyweight bout, Bobby. Mm. I mean, they were going back and forth, an 80-yard drive, then back to a 79-yard drive and an 80-yard drive. So it was an exciting game to watch. Technically, I had a lot of problems with it. But from an exciting fan perspective, it was a great game to watch. It was definitely entertaining. I mean, when you looked at the first possession, the Ravens drove, drive right down the field. They kick a field goal, and then uh, Cleveland comes back, gets the touchdown. I think the big surprise for me was the fact that Cleveland was able to run the football so well. Two rookie running backs. So they got a decent offensive line. I thought the Ravens would be able to run the football, but certainly Cleveland you know, held the ball quite a bit. And their quarterback, I mean, I think he's for real. The Cleveland Browns were underrated, underrated in my opinion, starting this year out. And uh, you got to give them a lot of respect. They played with a lot of heart. We usually start out with the offense. And I've got to start with rookie running back Lorenzo Taliaferro. 
he did a great job starting at running back. Now, when he was initially drafted, guys, I remember uh, Eric DaCosta saying that he was going to be a, a short uh, a short yardage back for us, that he was good in pass pro, he could catch out of the backfield a little bit, and he was good on special teams. So I had no doubt he was going to play this year, but I didn't think he was ever going to get the start. I thought, if anything, Forsett was going to start, and maybe then Talia Farrow would come in in certain situations for him. But they had the utmost confidence in this kid, and he showed Bruce some elusiveness that I didn't think he had. You know, for a big back, he's, he's over 6'1", he's like 230-some pounds, and he hits the hole with authority. When you're stretching, you, you pick your moment, and then you got to put the hammer down and hit that hole and go north-south, which he's able to do. And he does, as you mentioned, Mike does have a little shake to him. Uh, but there's a situation with a guy like Pierce who you cannot really count on. And, and I want to talk about how coaches think. Coaches think like school teachers. Where's my problem, child? Where's my problems? They don't look at where all the good kids are. They think about where are my problems? And for this football team offensively, Gary Kubiak is thinking about, I have a problem with Steve Pierce because I just don't know if he'll get on the field or not. And Bernard uh, Pierce. Bernard, no, he plays yeah, no, Steve Pierce. Is, <laughs> although, <laughs> right, Steve. although he was out for a couple games. You got the O's on your mind. Yeah, we got the <laughs> Orioles. No, nothing yeah, wrong with that. Thanks. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's just one of those things that now that now Talaferro gets the shot, yeah. and he ran extremely well. We're going to see. I think they'll still have a back by committee kind yeah, of situation. I agree. But uh, Bernard Pierce well, I think can't they make need the that. club in the tub, babe. I think they need that because, you know, if you look at Forsett's history, he's another guy who's a pretty good productive running back, but his history has been he gets injured as well. So maybe a sticking the rookie out there was, a, you know, a strategy by the Ravens. He's a bigger guy. He can take a beating a little bit. Forsett, you need him. And I think it just worked out where um, Talia Farrow was having success. Go with the hot hand. They did that. And then Forsett played his role. He certainly did. And look, it all starts up front. And guys, I was telling you all fair that uh, I went back last night before the show and I watched three and a half hours worth of film just going back and forth on my clicker. And I, after a while, it got a little crazy. But the offensive line, the job that they've done, and I've got to start with Jeremy Zuta at center. Watching him play and handle uh, the defensive line, the nose tackle over top of him, he did a phenomenal job. The O-line as a whole did a very good job, including Kyle Juszczyk, who was used in a blocking role as much as a receiving role in that game, and he did a good job. Uh, very impressed, Bruce. Mike, can't you tell when you sit there, as you mentioned, and you have a tape and you're looking at, it's the fire off, to get off the ball, mm -hmm. get into your man, and sustain the block, which means move the line of scrimmage that way and, and maintain your block. You don't have to have it for two or three seconds, but you got to keep some type of pressure on that defensive player, and that way the running game will work. Well, you see the difference from last year to this year. Last year, you had a center that was being overpowered. Plus, he was having trouble picking up the coverage and calling out the line uh, coverage. And that was a big problem. So this year, you've got an experienced guy who's made a big difference. We've seen how, how important that center position is. Matt Burke was a big loss last year. And now with, with, the, with the addition of Zuta, he's just a different player than Greg Kelsey. And also, Bobby, when they know they have a weakness there, you see other teams gut blitz them. You know, with the X's right up the, you know, the one and zero hole, and they're not doing that as much now. And I think they're, they're not able to do it, and they don't feel like they, they will work for them. So the bigger plays with Gino in there, they just knew they could overpower him or always put somebody on his nose and move him back off the line of scrimmage. You can't run the football if you're going backwards. And I think a guy that we're not really talking about, but that's a good thing, is right tackle Rick Wagner in his second year out of Wisconsin. He has held up very nicely and held up well against Paul Kruger, who had a couple of sacks week one. And, uh, you know, we, we know what Kruger can do. We're not saying he's the greatest pass rusher in the NFL, but he is capable of times in certain games against lesser tackles of getting a couple of sacks or collapsing the pocket, and he did a few times in the game. On the Joe Flacco interception was one of them. But all in all, it wasn't, and that wasn't Rick Wagner on, on that play that it was his fault. He's done a nice job, guys. Yeah, he really has. It. And, and that's important that he's able to uh, get into that role and, and do his job. And they don't have to leave a tight end over there to chip on him. They're, they're letting him play a little bit, and so far, so good. But as we move forward and the competition gets a little bit, get a, just a little bit stiffer on the defensive side of the football, uh, we'll see what happens. And, Bruce, you know the other good thing is he hasn't had any false starts. How about we don't that? Want to put the kiss of death on him, yeah. but the oh, other guy was, there, like, uh, was prone to jump a little yeah. bit. So let's not go. If, over. if you don't hear his name, it's usually a good thing if you're playing right tackle.
And, and guys, getting off to a fast start, the Ravens didn't do that in the Cincinnati game. We talked about that being uh, an example of what happened all of last year. They did it in the Pittsburgh game, and in the Cleveland game, they did the same thing. They get a field goal. Cleveland responds with a touchdown, but then we respond with a touchdown as well. So important in the first uh, couple of quarters there, especially on the road to do that. It's, it's, so, it's paramount because when, when you go to a city like Cleveland, has a huge history uh, of football fans, you got to take the fan out of the game. And, and when you go on the road as a player, that's what you're trying to do. Let's play hard. Let's play fast. Let's get up on them. We'll flip the crowd, and, and they'll start booing them or, or, or get disenchanted or whatever. And that way, you kind of take all the mess that you got to worry about when you play on the road against uh, uh, crowd noises and things like that. you got to silence them. Bobby, an issue, though, that uh, arose for the Ravens again, red zone issues. And, and the more I look at tape without breaking down all the different plays that happened and why things didn't work out in the red zone, I think it's probably best said that truly in the red zone, because there's so little ground that the defense has to cover and it makes it easier for them, you truly need all 11 guys playing their responsibility and doing their job. One guy breaks down, uh, there's more of a chance of the play not working than if it's, say, at midfield. No question. In the red zone, if you break, break it down even uh, smaller in this position, you look at the red zone, you say, they can't get a first, they can't get one yard. It's been going on for a couple years now. I think we're the worst team when it comes to getting a half yard or one yard. And I wish they would just throw the quarterback sneak out. Joe Flacco is not a great quarterback sneak quarterback. I think he's just too tall. He doesn't get down low enough. And even in the Pittsburgh game, when he went over the top, I mean, he almost got killed in that game. So, you know, I'm not sure what it is yet. We definitely have to improve on the red zone. I think that will happen. But in short yardage, when you, when you have to get a yard, your coach has to, has to have confidence. And John Harbaugh has had confidence in the offense of getting that yard. He's made a lot of tough decisions on fourth and one to go. And unfortunately, we just haven't been that successful. And uh, I, I would say with the way the running game was going, to have Joe Flacco in a quarterback sneak, I think you used that far and few between. I know it worked against Cincinnati, but with the way our running game was going, Bruce, I don't know why you do it. We only have about 30 seconds, but go ahead. Well, I mean, the thing, the thing that bothered me was the fourth and one call. Not that they went for it, but what they ran. They ran an offset eye into an overload with someone on the nose of the center. They ran it right into the strength of the defense, and it slanted that way. I, I just do not understand why we do not look at our fronts and check out of things. But I've been saying that for five years, and it's never going to change. All right, lots more to come. It's the Ravens Rap Show on Comcast Beach TV, WMDT TV Channel 47, and 93.5 The Beach. Keep it here. In April 1959, Art Wall won the Masters, edging out Carrie Middlecoff and Arnold Palmer by finishing birdie, 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 par birdie. One month later, Ocean City Golf Club celebrated the opening of their first 18 holes. That course has been transformed now into one of the most scenic golf layouts on the East Coast. Come experience 36 of the most beautiful and challenging holes you'll find anywhere. Ocean City Golf Club in Ocean City, Maryland. Like 33rd Street was to Colt fans, Russell Street will become legendary for future generations of Raven fans. Not only is Russell Street the team's address on Sunday, it's now home to the website voted Baltimore's best five years in a row. You've known them as Ravens247.com for years, and now you'll love them as RussellStreetReport.com for many more. There's nothing else like it for Baltimore football fans. Trust me, RussellStreetReport.com, Baltimore's home for football 24-7. Welcome to the Comfort in Gold Coast. Conveniently located just one block from the beach and adjacent to shopping at the Gold Coast Mall and the movie theater. Newly renovated and open year round with a marvelous bayfront view. Visit us on the web at comfortgoldcoast.com and see our hot deals and great golf packages or simply call our direct reservation line to plan your stay.